What is up, it's Victor Hunter, and today we're gonna to talk about the Heliostrap biocharge analysis. So Amazfit with the Heliostrap and originally on the balance tube, but they took it back, they introduced the new physiological tracking aspect called biocharge. And the concept was, is your day, your life, your workouts, your running around throughout the day depletes your battery, and overnight you recharge your battery. So they are making an assessment of how active and busy and hardworking your day was and how much it depletes your battery over time. And it actually is a, a component that's very similar to Garmin's body battery. So for a long time, Garmin's body battery basically takes into account your heart rate variability over time and it shows in real time how much your restful day may keep your body battery sort of at the same level, how a hard workout may decrease your body battery, how a good night's sleep and good metrics HRV wise uh, can rejuvenate. And across time, as I've tested different devices, there's really nothing better than this one physiological tracking metric called body battery on Garmin. You can see, you know, obviously it takes into account like high stress, I was sick this week, and we're gonna compare it to the Heliostrap biocharge. And I don't know if there's a analytical way to really appropriately compare other than to see them side by side over the course of a week. Now this week was a heavy training week. This week was a sickness week where I carried a sickness for pretty much the whole week until the last couple days. And so you'll see that in some of the metrics, you'll see it more clearly on the Garmin body battery, but we're just gonna compare them head to head. Now, what are we not comparing head to head? That's the Heliostrap versus the Whoop dynamic. So if you were to look at Whoop, Whoop basically takes into account your nightly uh, recovery. So basically it's gonna take into your a primary set of physiological aspects to determine what your recovery was after that one night of rejuvenation or recovery based on those physiological aspects. So it does not look at all at what's happening throughout your day. So the biocharge doesn't compare in any way really to the value it offers for what value WHOOP offers. Now I feel like WHOOP's recovery score is the best culmination of a multitude of factors for your recovery every morning approaching the day, but it's just different than what you would get when you look at the body battery, which is just assessing the impact of stress and hard work and on, on your overall um, physical well being to go approach a hard workout or just your overall um, physical well being. And so we're gonna compare that to the biocharge metric. So when you look at each of these, you can see the biocharge, and we're just gonna look at a snapshot just. In simple terms, it takes into account, like if you look at this, you see your night of sleep, you got a rejuvenation. You, I did a walk in the morning, so that shows up as a slight depletion. I had a very chill morning, that shows up as somewhat level. Then I had workout number one, you can see that, and then workout number two a little bit later. In this particular day, I had a nap, and you can see a rejuvenation from the nap literally on the biocharge. Ironically, the Garmin didn't catch the nap. I, it, it never catches my naps. It's like as unreliable as it possibly could be when it comes to nap tracking. So here's just a snapshot of the whole day. So I had like a walk, which is minor in the beginning, which you don't see much of a, a, of a negative hit. And then you see a couple of real workouts that do deplete. And that's what it tells you. It shows you the activity level of the day and how it affects things across the day. And if you were to compare this to the body battery itself, we're gonna go week, you know, day by day throughout an entire week. So we're gonna look at every day from when I started my sickness last Saturday all the way through the week and just to look generically at them side by side and we're not gonna look at Whoop versus it because it doesn't calculate that. So with that, let's dive into the details. Okay, so looking at obviously at biocharge, we're gonna go back a week to Saturday when I started feeling poorly, but you can see this was back before the update with the biocharge or the heliostrap recording a whole bunch of different activities. But you can see a sort of comparison of the mountain to the body battery. Um, obviously, it's a very similar hill on the sleep and then sort of an impact to the day as well as like a rapid decline. They both ended up in the dumps, so at the very bottom of the spectrum. So that was, I thought, a positive. So you look at day two. 13th, you sort of look at the span. So I had sort of a low recharge overnight versus what the biocharge was able to pick up and then sort of a decline, sort of a generic decline, I would say, um, whereas the body battery was taking into account more physiological factors. And then here on Monday, 
it looks very similar, sort of a similar, sort of a smooth, low level day, as well as a workout that depleted. So the biocharge had me depleting a little bit more at the end. And looking at the next day, we can see the chart actually looks sort of the same. The biocharge is just a little bit higher, having the sort of the start to the day at a little bit higher peak, but having sort of a similar flow where the workouts seem to affect your your biocharge a lot more than the body battery does on the Garmin. And then on the 16th, similar, although, um, yeah, just the body battery just didn't rejuvenate as much. And the biocharge just had a steady decline, but just rejuvenated extra. So it looks sort of similar if you actually take into account that the biocharge overcharged as the night went on. And then when you look at the next day, you see a very similar sort of thing, not as detailed, but you at least it's taken into account a low level rejuvenation or recharge at night. And um, let's go to the next. And then here you can see sort of a similar, um, again, the biocharge is just re recharging a little bit more at night than actually probably am physiologically with the sickness and things that were going on. And then um, Saturday, very similar. Although yesterday I did do a whole bunch of different cardio things and the biocharge actually took that more into account, even with a little nap built in there. Um, it did pick up the nap. You can see that on the biocharge and boom, what do you see on the body battery? You see nothing because the Garmin missed the nap. So failure there, but the biocharge is probably actually more accurate on this day. And then into today. Um, so sort of a similar thing that we've been seeing where I'm feeling a little bit better. So I even had a restful day, restful morning. And so it recuperated or it rejuvenated more body battery. So if you were to compare one to the other, you know, that's exactly how it would look. Um, when I go and I was to compare to Whoop, say in a different time frame, just looking at different days. So if we go into the 19th, it doesn't really, it's not, it doesn't take into account the same things. So Whoop basically does a summary of your night. So it's not, it's not actually taking into account your day. So it's not really a direct comparison because Whoop is just more of a, a nighttime recovery score versus an all day impact score. So that's why we're not really looking at, at Whoop specifically. Okay, so what do I think, you know, in real life, what do I think of the biocharge in the spectrum of things I've tested, the spectrum of devices and analytical aspects? Number one, you have to look at Amazfit's offering in general. So I did a whole video on their wellness spectrum outside of body uh, biocharge. So if you look at their wellness spectrum, their sleep score and their readiness score, the two primary components that show up on the main screen, both of those are not worthwhile at all to me because I did a whole video. I'll put a link in the description uh, below. So because they just basically don't take into account real, they basically all stay elevated. Like I'm always doing well. I'm always good. Even throughout this week of sickness, it was like 78, 75 was maybe my lowest score from a readiness and a sleep score. So that's not worthwhile. And so when I look at the biocharge compared to, let's just take it, head to head versus the body battery. It's not as good because Garmin's body battery is taking into account more true physiological tracking of your HRV throughout the day, but it is good because it really does take into account a bird's eye snapshot and it shows you a full depletion. Like when I was sick Monday through Thursday, primarily it was showing me or Sunday, it was showing me like hitting zero every day, hitting zero every day. And I don't, I'm not really even sure what all physiological metrics they take into account other than activity and heart rate, but it was showing me at zero at the end of the day. So I feel like it adds value. It's definitely worthwhile. And even in the spectrum of other devices, all the other devices, they do the same thing. They do a nightly recovery score, a nightly sleep score. Polar does a great job with just a culmination of multiple data points to give you a clear recommendation for how your recovery is but it's still just the night. And biocharge is the first step in the right direction for a company to look at your 
whole day and give you direction as it might affect how you approach the next day and you're planning for rest or recovery or a hard workout. So those are my thoughts. It's just sideline comparison, both the thoughts on the biocharge as well as comparison to the body battery. So Vic, your hunter, thanks so much for watching.